mark five months since the deadliest and most destructive wildfire in California's history nearly wiped the mountain town of Paradise off the map. There's not much left in the Northern California community of about 26,000 people, many of whom have not returned and may never. But there are signs of hope and inspiration in the ruins of that tragedy. NBC's Steve Patterson has our Sunday closer. High above what's left of paradise after last fall's campfire burned nearly everything to the ground. It's hard to imagine you could ever find beauty again. But if you look closely, you might find it staring right at you. Paintings of beautiful women projected on the facades of ruins, all the careful creations of one man. I wanted something to definitely affected you emotionally. LA-based freelance artist Shane Grammer, who grew up outside of Paradise, says he was inspired to paint there because of one Facebook post, a lone chimney rising above the shredded remains of a friend's home. To Shane, it looked more like a canvas. Sometimes you just know, and a, you know, a gut reaction, I knew I needed to go paint that chimney. Armed with Kansas spray paint, he transformed a reminder of personal tragedy into what residents saw as a symbol of hope. And you weren't sure it was going to have any connection. Oh, heck no. Are you kidding? No, I didn't know how the community would respond at all. The response? Overwhelming. Residents so moved, they asked him to keep painting. It did move people emotionally. Uh, it, to me, that was a miracle. Proving that paradise could still be beautiful, even like this. At Hope Church, there wasn't much to work with. Remarkably, only a wooden cross still stands. But Shane found a way. It's special. Something inspirational in the middle of what seems, you know, so chaotic. Inspiration is found faded into the rusted ruins of a church baptismal, sun bathing on the side of a hollowed out shed, or spread across the shell of a burnt fan. In total, Shane has painted 17 murals, all with the blessings of property owners. Most so subtle, even haunting, they seem to blend in with all the chaos. Well, yeah. What's the decision to do that? It was important to me that the the work faded in, almost felt like it was a part of this environment. While most of his work is inspired by faith, portraits of women representing a song of Solomon, a love story from the Bible, others are more personal. Watch out for nails. Nicole and Greg Wedig lost their home, escaping yeah. with their child Eleanor, who now looms over what's left, a reminder of their life here. She's looking up at it at the future. What's your hope for paradise? They will rebuild, you know, they will grow again, they will thrive again. That's really the deep message is that there's hope and there's life again. There's beauty, there's beauty among the ashes. For Sunday Today, Steve Patterson, Paradise, California. Oh, man, hi. Uh, so I, I'm the big guy that cries at chick flicks, so I'm going to Try to trying to relax right now and breathe. Um, so this is home. This is my wife, stand up, Missy. My wife. <clears throat> I completely understand that she makes me look good. I get that. Um, but uh, we we most of our marriage we've been at this church. So this church is our family. Our, we have three daughters, and they were born while we were at this church attending it. So you guys are very special to us and. And we miss you very much. Um, a lot of people, I've been interviewed by New York Times, LA Times, Ron Howard's team, uh, documentary crews from Stanford, uh, Notre Dame, um, Inside Edition, Washington Post, things like that. So a lot, of, a lot of news that I've never had in my life. And they always say, the first thing they say is, you're kind of humble. And... Uh, and then I say, well, because I've had my life handed over to me. My wife and I know what it's like to, you know, shut a business down. And um, so. we, we know what it's like to have a car repoed. We know what it's like for her to sell her wedding ring. You know, I when I, I came to The Rock, I met with Francis, and um, I had issues. You know, I had brokenness, and 
I told him, and he said, buddy, you need counseling? <laughs> and, uh, and if you know me, you know, it's like, dude, I know. <laughs> uh, and I started this journey of learning how to uh, open up and uh, get freedom and, and wholeness and trans learning how to be transparent and learning how to have healthy relationships. And uh, a lot of my testimony is, you know, my real dad died from a heroin overdose, never met him. And my stepfather came in when I was two. He's a raging alcoholic. He despised me because I was from another man. And three years later, they had my younger brother, and my younger brother's his new beginning. So I, I grew up kind of uh, seeing intimacy from the outside. It was on my, I felt like there was plexiglass you know, in, in there. I couldn't really attain it. And uh, so I thought something was bad, something was wrong with me. And I, I from an early age, I was a good kid, but I, I was, you know, peace out. I'm out of here. I'm going to go hang out with friends and my grandma and were people that I thought that connected with me and loved me for who I was. And, and uh, so I, I understand hurt and, and brokenness and things like that. Another, well, before I go to a backstory, is there anyone here from Paradise? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, give them a hand. We love you guys very much. It'd be cool to pray for them at the end. If, um, but a backstory that I, I will tell a lot of media, I have two backstories. The first one is, this was another walk in the park for me. So it, was, you know, it wasn't something special that I thought. Uh, I've been doing murals in orphanages since I was 19. Um, a lot of that through this house in, in Peru, painted in a church that no one will ever see. Uh, Brazil, painted in a school. And um, inner city, I used to live in San Francisco, lived on Six and Mission, working with kids there. Painted murals in the Tenderloin, Hunter's Point, um, some pretty devastated areas. Um, and then uh, Cambodia through Clayton Butler. Used to go here. I don't know if he still goes here at the Rock, but um, uh, rescues girls from the sex trade in Cambodia. And I went there and did a mural project. And that's always been a God has always used me to use the gifts that He has given me to bring hope and joy to the downcast and brokenhearted. It's a theme that I'll continue to do the rest of my life. Um, the other backstory is why the woman, and they mention it in in the media, but. Yeah, father issues. And when Diane Parnell, uh, a gal that used to go to The Rock, um, does a whole teaching on Song of Solomon and the allegory of this passionate love story from, from God the Father to the beautiful bride, who is us. It's really a love story to us. So that, one, that image of the woman is saying, God, you love paradise. You love mankind. You're coming back for a beautiful, spotless bride. And that's also a message to me and my own brokenness and woundings and, and uh, stuff that God is still working with me in, uh, learning how to trust him as a loving, loving, faithful father. And, well, you know, going out there and, and painting this, I, I, I have to do that. I have to express myself as an artist. It's a passion that God has put in me so strong. I didn't care if anybody would, would ever put it on media or or blow it up or anything like that. I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah. And I, I was like addicted out there. I was like, ah, I get the paint on everything. <laughs> and everybody likes it, you know, or most people did. Um, so uh, I, I'm blown away by what God has done and just the story that this is. And, and, I'm, and I'm very honored by the leadership here because, honestly, this is the first church that has asked, asked me to speak about this which I'm blown away and I'm a little frustrated about um, because mostly it's the world that's been coming to me. And, and I want to see the church get fired up and use the gifts that God has given them to make a difference and to do something. You wanna... And I, I, I do want to give my wife major props because... I've traveled a lot. Uh, she is the one holding the fort down with our family. Uh, she is the one that has also said, you need to go back up there and you got to paint, knowing that I'm going to be gone for five, six days at a time. And so I love you, babe, and you're amazing. So thank you very much. 
Come on, let's stand up together. Let's give it up for Shane. We're going to pray for him. I'll see you standing. I've known Shane almost 20 years now, and uh, it's been amazing just seeing the journey he's been on. Uh, he's our junior high director again for several years. We've, we've bled together in more ways than we can count. I shared, I think at first service, uh, Shane and I would regularly yell at God together uh, in his truck in front of our old building, Bonita, praying for our wives. And why hadn't they come yet? Yes, we did. Uh, over and over again. But, uh, but again, uh, a man that, again, when I, when I heard this, a friend sent a text, and I had no idea. And he's like, you don't know what happened? I was like, I genuinely don't know. I just saw something. What's going on? And uh, he, shared, he shared the story. I said, you got to share. You got to share to our community. Because really, Shane is an expression of us and uh, what it means to be a missionary in the cultural context in many ways. Um, there's one thing we want to pray for. It's open-handed. We don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, but there's a possibility that Shane could be able to paint on the remains of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, that happened. So um, let's just pray for that for Shane and Missy. Uh, you know, we want to support you guys if you do that. You know, as missionaries, you know, we're behind you. There's not a question behind that. I know the church would be. Uh, let's extend our hands and leadership can come up. Let's pray for Shane and Missy together, and then we'll pray as a, as a church. Actually, Bob, can you pray for them? Is it okay? Oh, man. Yeah. Jesus, we extend our hands and our hearts towards these guys. Lord, I, first I thank you for Shane's life, God. I thank you for redeeming him. God, I thank you for lifting him out of the ashes of pain and sorrow and dysfunction and sin. I thank you, God. Th this is a walking testimony of your goodness and your grace and what you can do in somebody that will simply say, yes, Lord. And so, God, continue to bless him and miss him. We thank you, God, for their marriage, their life, their children. God, we, we thank you that here's a man that, that has ministered so well in obscurity. He's never looked for attention. He's never sought it out for himself. He's never sought glory. He's just simply looked to interpret your heart and put it on canvas and murals and, and, and multiple expressions, God, of the creativity and the giftedness that you've placed in him, God. And we believe that with every mural, there will be multitudes of healing transformations, God. We believe that that's a sovereign thing, and it's an anointed work, God. And we pray that you would continue to give him the grace. Give Missy the grace, God. I thank you for her, Lord Jesus. So, God, we just as a church say thank you for this man. Thank you for what you've done in his life, for what you're doing, God. And we know that you get all the glory. You get all the fame, God. And we pray that Shane would continue to represent you well, God. In the name of Jesus, amen.